Well, this is a true tall spindle block, planted the perfect spacing, three feet by 11. You get about 1,300, 1,200 trees per acre, per acre about 3,000 per hectare. Here we have five rootstocks again to try to illustrate uh, the different options if you plant this sort of spacing. Now this three foot spacing is perfect for Gala. As the trees get older, we're gonna essentially do the mature pruning in four simple steps. It's really three normal steps plus one extra step for Gala. And I'm just gonna describe it to you now because I hope it enthuses you that this is such a simple pruning system. Anybody can do it. Any worker you have can be taught to do this. It's so simple. The first step is to just to cut the tree off at the optimum height to a side branch. Now none of them are at that point yet. So it's like two years away before, or three years away before we do step number one. But it's simply the row spacing times 0.9 or 90% of the row spacing. So quick, who's quick on their feet? 11 feet times 90% is 9.9 feet. Okay, 99. Basically 10 feet. So you're just going to have a guy, you could actually do this with platforms. That's really the best way, the most efficient way to do it because this system can be partially mechanized and you can reduce pruning costs. I can guarantee you if you had acres of this by 30% by partially mechanizing this. You go through with the platform, the guy cuts the top at exactly the 9.9 feet to some little side branch. Step number one. Step number two take out two of the biggest branches along that trunk. Doesn't matter which ones they are, but you take out two. Usually their ones are about three quarters of an inch to an inch in diameter, because that's as big as we let them get. Step number three, each branch is then columnarized in its pruning, meaning that I want exactly what I have right here, a column of fruit without side branches that have fruit. The reason for that is to improve light distribution. I can stack or insert, it's kind of the wrong, because I don't really insert them, but I can allow the tree to grow a lots of small branches in that one yard or two yards. I can just stick a whole bunch of branches in there if they're all columnar in character. Because by having them columnar, I can get some light filtering around them. If I allow them to make side branches, then I've got to have many fewer per foot. I've got to take out a lot so that there's more space between them. So this third step of columnarizing the branches it's kind of a newer addition to our pruning protocol, but it's essential if you want to keep color in these trees. Terrence, is that essential for all varieties? All varieties. Now we do more on the Fuji, which tend to put out more side branches. It takes a little more time. Gala tends to want to keep columnarized. But when you take out two branches, you're often taking out the ones that have the most side branching. They're the biggest. So by the two cuts, you take off part of your problem. The ones that are left are younger, they're already partially columnarized, so it's a very simple step to columnarize. Now that's what we do on Fuji, or Max, or Empire, or Jonagol. Because over there, we should go back and just talk about it. They have a lot of fruits that bear on the tips. And on Fuji, that is wonderful. Those fruits that bear on the tips, just bring the branches down. You don't need to do any manual spreading or tying. They love to bear fruits on the tips, and those are where you get the biggest fruit size. But on Gala, it's not the way. And it's a little too early in this block to really tell. But you can start to see it right here already. That was a wonderful feather last year. With the weight of apples, it bent down. How much terminal growth did we get? We got only six inches. And it's small in diameter. Now this year, I've added half an inch of terminal growth. Next year, those will all be fruited. So I could carry 15 apples in that six inches. And unfortunately, Gala wants to put 15 apples on that 6 inches, and it's hard to thin them off. So whenever we get branches bent down, and the diameter starts to, what I say, pencil down to less than pencil diameter, we start to get small fruit size on the end. So with Gala, we institute this one additional step, step number four, and that shorten back each branch to about where it's pencil in diameter in size. That throws on the ground a whole slug of flower blossoms and small or fruit that are potentially small. So it's a very quick way to partially thin the tree with your pruning shear. But when you go through on Gala, you're doing some shortening back pruning on these branches that are now penciled down. 
takes a little more time, but it gives you much better fruit size. The other thing that it does, it makes a very columnar tree. So after 10 years, you know, you're shortening back branches, you don't have the long flowy problem that we have on Fuji. So it works very, very well at this three foot spacing. If you put it at four feet, then you do the stubbing back, you sometimes think, man, I wish I had a pack the middle and columnar the trees. That's why I had in this block three foot spacing which I think is ideal for Gala and the four foot spacing over there which is probably ideal for Fuji and Max and Jonagol and Matsu or any of those really vigorous varieties that you might want to plant. Weaker varieties, Gala, Honeycrisp, Empire, John and Mac if anybody want to plant it, uh, Zestar, uh, Anybody planting Minnesota 1914, which there's nobody here in the valley, unfortunately. Weak, three foot spacing. Golden Delicious, three foot spacing. All of those. Nobody, now, what other varieties? Nobody's asked about tip bearers like Cortland. They tend to fit better at the four foot spacing because there we want to keep fruits on the tips. And we want to take, have that take the branch down. And I don't want to shorten it back. So over the four foot spacing tends to be a little easier to manage.